What's next for Mercedes Monet? Will Kenny Omega do the G1? What breakfast sausage do I like? All these questions answered and more on this week's Ask Russell Juice. Hey, friend, L. Steve here. Welcome back to another Ask Russell Juice. You guys got a bunch of great questions. Let's dive into them. So the main topic du jour uh, is, of course, Mercedes Monet, formerly known as Sasha Banks in the WWE. I stayed up late last night. I watched, sorry, two nights ago, and I watched Wrestle Kingdom. The full review of that for Going In Raw, the podcast I'm on, is available right now. We talked about it yesterday on the show, but this is Russell Juice. You guys are asking all sorts of questions about Mercedes Monet. I really thought that she looked like a million bucks out there. She came out at the end of the Kyrie Tam Nakano match uh, after they gave that match like all of six minutes. And she said, hey, February 18th, Battle in the Valley in San Jose, California, which is just close to here. But I can't go because we've got Elimination Chamber and we've got an Action Coast Wrestling show on that day. So I can't go to that show. Uh, But that's where that match is is going to take place. So you guys got a bunch of questions about that. I thought I'd give you sort of my first impressions. Um, I like that her theme song had some crisscross jump jump in it. Uh, That was kind of cool. Thought she looked great. Thought her hair looked really cool. Um, But really the question I'm more interested in, if MF Steve here is uh, is asking the question of Russell Juice is asking the question, and that's really, uh, I want to see what Sasha Banks' wrestling looks like outside of WWE. I want to see what she looks like with a little bit more freedom, because as we know in WWE, things are a little more, I don't know, how do you say, locked down a little bit? Like they're giving a bit more freedom on the outside world, in the outside world, outside of WWE. And so I'm really looking forward to seeing what she brings inside the ring when it comes to her wrestling. I've always felt that Sasha Banks is a very creative wrestler, and I feel like she needs an outlet like this if she really wants to explore what she can do in a wrestling ring without WWE. But a couple of you have other questions here. So the, look, this is just, there's four of you, I think maybe a couple more, Eastside Reviews, Russell Cram, White Brownie, and Carlos Diaz, all had kind of the same question, and that's what's next for Mercedes Monet. Uh, for example, uh, some of you are asking, do you think she's going to be a- in AEW? So right now, the rumor is, according to Fightful anyways, a lot of people in the AEW locker room believe that Sasha Banks, Mercedes Monet, is going to be Soraya's uh, tag partner. Apparently, nobody's actually been able to confirm this. It's not one of those things where, oh, yeah, people have confirmed that this is going to happen, like back when CM Punk was coming back. But this is more a general feeling in the locker room that it's going to be Mercedes Monet. So I don't know. I don't have any info on that. And I don't even know if I could properly speculate on that because I just I simply don't know. I will say this. Carlos Diaz says, now that we know Mercedes is a heel, who's most likely to be Soraya's tag partner? I don't think uh, uh, Mercedes sort of heel or face dynamic matters much. I think if she shows up in AEW, she's going to be a good guy. I think she's going to be who she is, regardless of if she shows up to to help out Soraya or not. Um, so honestly, the answer is, I don't know. I think there's any number of valid sort of even like sort of high profile names that could be Soraya's tag partner. And that's even considering that Brian Alvarez from Wrestling Observer has said that Naomi is actually going to be heading back to WWE, according to his sources. Um, I mean, it could be something as underwhelming as like Tony Storm. Uh, It could be the return of Thunder Rosa. I think that would make the crowd pop pretty big. Um, If they're, if they really play it up this week on dynamite, which would have taken place last night because this is being released on Thursday. Now that I think about it. So depending on how they played it up on dynamite, they want to be careful with how to get the crowd expectations to go a certain way. You know, like if it ends up being Thunder Rosa, you really want to downplay the idea that it could be Mercedes on the go home episode of Dynamite to the L.A. show, which is, of course, next week. So um, I don't know what I don't know who it's going to be. I think that according to this question here uh, from White Brownie, if Mercedes was assigned with AEW, does Tony Khan lock her down for multiple years? I feel like she'd be too expensive for Tony Khan, I know he's a billionaire, but he still has like kind of a talent budget to work with. He's still paying CM Punk for not being on TV. Um, And if if her price was too big for WWE for a longer term contract for a two to five year contract, I don't see AEW paying that kind of money for her either, especially in the limited way they use their women's division. They have one women's match per week uh, on Dynamite, one on Rampage. 
And at a certain point, are you going to overpay? You're going to pay way too much money for somebody to be there on, you know, basically you've got Soraya, you've got Britt Baker, you got the champion, Jamie Hayter, you got Jade Cargill, and now you're going to bring in Sasha Banks. There's only so much room, and I don't see Tony Khan expanding what he's been doing with the women's division. I'll believe that when I see it. So I don't think she'd be there for an extended period of time. I think it's entirely possible she does the same thing in uh, AEW as she does in New Japan, and that's just per appearance. You know, you bring her in for uh, the match uh, in L.A. You Maybe you bring her in for Revolution. You bring her in a couple times during the year, and you just, all, you, all you're doing is paying a per appearance fee, which is still pretty hefty, but you're not locking yourself into a three-year deal and paying a really large amount of money for somebody who you're not going to use all that much. That's my gut feeling. I think it's probably like if, if the rumors say it's going to be her, then it's probably going to be her. Then Tony Khan found a way to say, hey, you know, we'll make you a big, big deal over here. We'll give you a big, big deal money, but it's going to be broken down on a per appearance basis. That seems like it might be a very plausible scenario. And I think she's just going to go out and do per appearance stuff. And I, I get the feeling that before too long, like maybe even the summertime, uh, maybe around SummerSlam, late August, we'll see her back in WWE. I mean, is she going to win the IWGP title off of Kyrie? Maybe. You can run with that for, what, four, five, six months or whatever, and then drop it back and go back to WWE. And at that point, WWE is going to be negotiating their TV deal. They're going to want to pop ratings as much as they possibly can. So why not plunk down that money, which kind of pales in comparison to if, they, if she's looking for Becky Lynch money, which is like $3 million a year, why not give her the money because you're looking at billion dollar deals? That's a lot of money. And yeah, you're establishing a precedent where other stars who can pop ratings are going to get more money. That's kind of how business works. So anyways, uh, let's move on. That's what I think is going to happen next with her. I think that she's going to do, she's probably going to win the title of Kyrie. She'll probably have a little stint in, uh, in New Japan defending the IWGP women's title. Maybe she'll do uh, some uh, appearances for stardom to try to boost stardom's uh, profile. Uh, and then maybe she'll do a little bit of AEW here and there. And that kind of is enough. I don't see her going to like Impact or Action Coast or anything like that. I think probably by SummerSlam, we'll see Sasha Banks back in WWE. Uh, let's move on. Lewins88 says, any idea what's happening with the AEW UK, AEW UK show? No. They dropped uh, the information back in November that they were going to be doing the UK in 2023. That's this year now, but it's still early. No more info uh, from that. So I don't know what's happening with that. Uh, let's see here. Nick, my hero, says, do you think Vince McMahon will ever return to the world of wrestling outside of WWE, like starting a new wrestling company or investing in a smaller one? Hell no. Not a chance. His ego is way too big to do anything like that. The champ says, do you think Big E has recovered enough to be a surprise entrant in the Royal Rumble? Last I heard, he was waiting for the one-year mark for his injury, which I think if I want to say it was in March was when the injury occurred, but I could be wrong about that. Um, and that's like they're just going to test him or see where he's at at that point. I feel like his injury is probably substantial enough to preclude him from coming back to the Royal Rumble. Um, and I'd be kind of surprised if he did even wrestle again. I get the feeling that he's, his career is going to be outside of wrestling, maybe in entertainment, but I don't know. Like I, I could see him easily being, I, I could see him doing anything to be honest with you. He'd be on TV, movies, animated shows, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Uncharted media says what wrestling cliches do you think are overdone or that you're sick of seeing what wrestling cliches Oh man, I don't know. Um, I don't like when wrestlers look at the refs uh, while they're while they're doing the pinfall. It bugs the crap out of me because I'm always like, okay, well I know they're gonna kick out. Uh, I, I, for once, I just like to see a wrestler look at a ref while they're counting three. Like they they just lay there, they stare at the ref, their eyes are open, they're looking at the ref. One, two, three, match is over. It's like why are you staring at me the whole time? Why aren't you kicking out? Infinite Paradox says, do you think the four horsewomen mania match is still a possibility in the next three manias? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's most likely in the next three manias because you get past that. I'm not sure that Becky Lynch is going to be sticking around. I don't know that uh, uh, Mercedes Monet is going to want to stick around. So I think that the next three manias is a possibility. Uh, Claus Techno says, uh, I don't watch a lot of Impact. 
But one guy that I like a lot is Josh Alexander. My question is why a guy with so much talent is there when he clearly should be in a promotion with more visibility. Here's the crazy thing about Josh Alexander is that he is one of the very few people I can think of that really, really enhanced themselves after they were in a prominent tag team. The North in Impact, him and Ethan Page had like a 400-day run or something like that with the titles. And when Ethan Page left, that was left. Josh Alexander became shortly after um, he was on the road to becoming world champion. And I think he's fit into that role perfectly. I think that he's done a great job. I love him as champion. I think what Josh Alexander is doing is simply staying in Impact to raise his own stock then after he goes, after he leaves Impact. From what I understand, he just quit his day job like a year ago or so, maybe two years ago. And so being an Impact full-time is a relatively new thing for him. And I think once his, you know, maybe, I don't know how long his contracts are, once after he's established himself, he's going to be taking offers from these companies. And I think he's probably going to get a pretty good offer from somebody. Irish Insight says, do you think Okada will defend the IWGP title in AEW during this reign? I mean, if he does, it'll be at Forbidden Door if you want to consider that AEW, but that's still like a New Japan slash AEW show. Lick says, with Omega winning the U.S. championship from Osprey, how likely is it that he will be in the G1 this year? I'm going to give that a really small chance. He's had plenty of G1 appearances, and I don't know that he'd want to put his body through that level of 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 being beat up because the G one is notoriously bad for the wrestler's body. And he's already been through a lot. It took him a while to come back from his last slew of injuries. The G one is torture. I don't think that he'd do the G one. I really don't. I think he's going to have two more matches with Will Ospreay and he'll probably call it a day in new Japan. I could be wrong about that, but I think that's how it's going to go. Uh, horrific boo. A couple of you actually asked this question. Do you think AEW and new Japan do another forbidden door this year? I think they do. Absolutely. Uh, Darius Corey says, do you think Alexa Bliss's story arc gets her a match at Mania? I don't know. I think she'll be at Mania, but I don't know if it's going to, maybe they'll do like a money in the bank for the women at Mania and then we'll do a, also one for the men at Mania. I don't know. Um, but I'd like to think so. I think she's great. And I think that, you know, they're doing something with her character with this Bray Wyatt stuff. Shavon says, with the signing of Dragon Lee, Shinsuke appearing in Noah and Carl Anderson wrestling at Wrestle Kingdom, which promotion seems to be more realistic for WWE to partner with AAA, Noah, or New Japan. I mean, Noah is currently partnering with New Japan. They're doing crossover stuff there. I don't know, like the AAA market. I don't know um, if WWE would be that interested. I would think it's just New Japan. I think WWE would try to sort of yank the uh, AEW relationship away from New Japan and just do their own thing with them. I think that's a possibility for this year. I think WWE might open that forbidden door, but I could be wrong about that. Deep voice, dude, are there any dream feuds slash dream matches in WWE for CM Punk? Let's say he returns to the company at WrestleMania. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. I mean, everybody who's there that he hasn't wrestled is sort of like a dream matchup, like the current version of Seth Rollins. I know he's injured right now. Um, AJ Styles, of course, would be pretty cool. Uh, Kevin Owens, given that there seems to be some amount of heat there between the two of them. I think everybody that's there right now would be kind of a dream matchup for CM Punk. Whether or not his body could handle it, whether or not he'd actually sign a WWE, I don't know. Uh, let's see here. Moving on. Dustin Taylor says, now that Triple H is chance, you think now that Triple H is in charge, you think there's a chance he could bring back Adam Cole, assuming he gets cleared. The problem with that is Adam Cole is signed to AEW. If Tony Khan is to be believed through like 2027, he's there for a very long time. So I'm going to say no, just based on the length of his contract. New Generation VTV, what are your thoughts on Wrestle Kingdom? This was my favorite Wrestle Kingdom since Wrestle Kingdom 11, 2017, the first time I watched a Wrestle Kingdom. This was my favorite one since then. And he asked, did Omega versus Osprey reach the heights of Okada Omega? <sighs> Okada Omega matches were very, very special. And this was awesome. So far, it's my it's four days in. It's my match of the year candidate. It's probably going to be my match of the year candidate for a very long time because it was so brutal, but it was also very distinctly the first part of a multi-part story. And I feel like the Omega Okada matches were self-contained stories. That led to a bigger thing, but I think they were more self-contained. This was clearly chapter one. Uh, but I loved Wrestle Kingdom. I thought it was absolutely great. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Brandon asks, is Kenny and to a lesser extent, the Young Bucks at risk of being overbooked? They won over Aussie Open and AEW. Now they as EVPs have come back from 3-1 on their best of seven. Then he beats Osprey in New Japan. Is it starting to feel a bit like Lol Cena wins? I don't know. He's back. He's a big deal. He's always the best bout machine. He's a former world champion everywhere he went. So no, I don't think he's being overbooked. In fact, I would love to see 
the elite lose to uh, Death Triangle for those uh, uh, six man titles. And I think that's a possibility. Uh, let's see here. Already answered that. Jordan Courtney says, does WWE playing ball with New Japan put a potential Forbidden Door 2 at risk? Not this year. I think it's too early for that. But I think if they develop a relationship with New Japan over time, then I think that might put the relationship with New Japan and AEW at risk. But I kind of think it's too soon to be thinking that. But then again, Forbidden Door 2 wouldn't be for another six months, so I don't know. Uh, Eastside Reviews does ask, do you see Mercedes Monet beating Kyrie for the Women's Championship? I don't know. Probably. Like, you're not going to have her lose her first match, right? And the first match for the titles, you're going to win that. Uh, let's see here. We will. Uh, oh, Gabriel says, do you see Jay White in WWE? I think it's a possibility because he's really young. I don't want to see it, though. I think Jay White is so great in New Japan. And every time I've seen him in AEW or Impact Wrestling, he just doesn't have the same magic. He's got a relationship with New Japan, with the crowd, with the wrestlers, with everything there, with the pre- this presentation that they have. It's so him that I think he should be a permanent fixture in New Japan for a very long time. I don't really need to see him in, in WWE. Noob and Company asked, uh, when will Asuka come back and will she come back as a heel? I hope she comes back as the evil clown Asuka, as the Kana Asuka. Uh, we're going to end on this one. Fudgy says spicy breakfast sausage or maple breakfast sausage. At this point, I get uh, beyond spicy breakfast sausage patties for my breakfast sandwiches, which I pretty much have religiously every day. It's one egg, some uh, uh, cheddar and uh, some, uh, what is it? Monterey Jack cheese and uh, a spicy beyond breakfast sausage patty. There is a little hint of maple in it. They're really good. And it's on like a wheat a wheat English muffin. So anyways, that's what I like. Anyways, thanks so much for all your questions. I appreciate it. We'll be back, I think, tomorrow. What is tomorrow? Friday. Yeah, I'll be back tomorrow with Friday with another video. Thanks for watching, everybody. Till next time, check out this video here. Do me a favor. Hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it.